let's take a sec to think back, think back. <laughs> you know, it's a loaded question, man. I mean, it's like, at this point in my life, it's different than before because I'm trying to, like, feed, feed my family and, like, do this for a living. So there's a little bit less time to be bitter, you know? I used to feel that way. I mean, at the end of the day, I feel that way. I guess it happens to, to, to music in general. I mean, I guess it's happened to, like, I mean, it happened with rock and roll with Elvis. You know, people weren't really aware where he was, like, stealing things from. I guess it's happening now. I, I have more of a problem with, like, uh, people who are on and selling millions of records that don't really go back and put people on that helped influence them, you know? Why, why isn't Cool G Rap on platinum records right now? Cool G Rap should be a millionaire. Kane should be a millionaire. You know, Cool G Rap's the best rapper of all time. Hands down. Anyone who got an issue with that, take it up with me. But if you know rappers, that's the best rapper of all time. And to me, the fact that that dude's not filthy rich, yeah, he birthed so many people's style. You know, the whole gangster thing was like, there was a few integral people. It was like Schooly D out of Philly, Philly represent. You know, and like, you know, heads on the West Coast, whether it was NWA or whatnot in the early years. And like Cool G basically birthed that whole gangster thing, the whole gangster shit. Like, you know, in terms of talking about, um, you know, everyone now wants to be Italian and this and that. Like Cool G birthed that, you know. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I have a problem with it, but I also have other things like in front of me that are a little bit more important now, like taking care of myself, you know. But yeah, of course it bothers me. I'm an old school dude, you know, from Philly, and that's the other thing. Like, not only just rap culture in general, but Philly rap culture is completely overlooked. You know, like the contributions, Fresh Go and Miz, Cool C, Steady B, these people like played a huge part. Yeah, Grav, I mean, Grav and DJs, I mean, please, man. You ask all them kids, all those, you know, dudes who win all those battles, who the nicest are. Like Cash Money, man, please. He was murdering cats. You know, Jazzy Jeff, like, pe people, like, unfortunately, like, associate him with Will and things and soft stuff. Like, Jeff was and still is one of the best DJs ever and is, is heavily involved in, 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 in rap music still, you know. It's, it's beating a dead horse at this point. You can't, you can't really teach people things that they're not willing to learn, you know. It's like all this stuff out today, if that's the first thing they listen to, that's old school to them. You know, when 96 is old school to you, I really don't have much to, like, discuss with you. You know what I mean? It's pretty much, I'm, like, too old to argue, you know, but too young to care, you know? Well, I'm, like, a 70s baby, 77. So, like, by the time I was, like, four or five or six, uh, in, like, the real, real early 80s, I was, like, begging my parents to pay for b-boy lessons. So that's what I did first. And then um, I rapped in my second grade um, talent show over Candy Girl by New Edition. But no one will ever see. My mother's got the video, but that's never coming out. But I had two homeboys. They were twins that I went to school with in South Philly, and they were my backup dancers. And I, like, wrote my own little rap over Candy Girl. So that was, like, you know, 85 maybe. Um, I really, like, wanted to really... Um, this it was a record called This Cuts Got Flavor by Latte. It was produced by 45 King. That, that was like a heavy influence on me. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of the early stuff Mark the 45 King did and the early Philly stuff, LG, Lawrence Goodman, Hilltop Hustlers. Um, so by the mid 80s, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. So it's been like a 20 year thing in my head, like this is what I want to do. Never, you know, never like other aspirations of being like a businessman or you know, like, the only other thing I ever loved as much as rap was boxing. And now I'm too fat, so. Unless I drop, like, 70 and, you know, get sharp again, that's not going to happen. So I need to do this, you know. But it's my life, you know. It's not even, it's not even, like, part of my thought process anymore. It's just who I am, you know what I mean? Like, everything I do sort of, like, represent this, you know, who I am.